Hello all. Uh, in this lecture, we will uh, discuss the main theorem of this section that is the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. Okay, so let's move to the statement. Uh, the statement of the theorem is every integer n greater than or equal to 2 is either a prime or can be expressed as a product of primes. Okay, that is the and the next one is the factorization into primes is unique except for the order of the factors. That means order can be um, any uh, in, in any order that means the factorization is unique okay so here we have to prove two things first one is for any positive integer which is greater than or equal to 2 is either a prime or it can be written as a product of primes and the second one is this expression uh, into product of primes or prime is unique only in unique way we can express this so first we move to the first part that is every integer can be is either a prime or a product of primes. We prove this uh, by induction. First part. Eh? Proof is by strong induction. Okay. So first step, the basic step is for n equal to 2. Before that we will uh, write the statement p of n. Here p of n is the statement. Let P of N denote the statement that N is uh, N is prime or can be every integer, any positive integer N greater than or equal to 2 uh, is a prime or can be expressed as a product of primes. So this is our statement um, then uh, to show that p of true p of n is true for every integer first our aim is to show that p of n is true true for every integer n greater than or equal to 2. For n equal to the basic step. So first we consider the basic step. P of 2. Since uh, P of 2. Since uh, 2 is a prime number. Uh, we, we can say that. We see that. P of n is true for n equal to 2. Now for the induction hypothesis, uh, assume that the result is true for uh, p of 2, uh, n equal to 2, 3, etc. up to k. That is, uh, as now assume that this is the induction hypothesis. Now assume that p of uh, 2, 2, P of 3, P of 4, etc., P of K are true. That is, uh, every integer every integer 2 through K either is a prime or can be expressed as a product of primes. So what we assumed is that uh, this is the induction step, step of uh, strong hypothesis. That is, uh, the result is true for n equal to n0, n0 plus 1, etc. up to uh, k. That is, we are assuming that p of 2, p, we proved that n is true for, uh, p of n is true for n equal to 2. 
and assume that p of 2 up to etc p of k are true that is every integer uh, 2 through k is either a prime or a expressed as a product of primes now we have to show that p of k plus 1 is true So, if P, k plus 1 is a prime number, then uh, it is obvious, the result is obvious. That is, then there is nothing to prove. Hence, assume that, now we assume that k plus 1 is a composite or it is a composite number then we can write k plus 1 as the product of two numbers let a and b where a is greater than 1 and also a comma b is greater than 1 where 1 less than a and b must be less than k plus 1 uh, 1 less than a comma b uh, which is less than a comma b which is less than k plus 1. So the product that means a and b are the uh, factors or devices of k plus 1. Since being a composite integer it must have uh, positive devices other than the number and 1 itself. Okay. So by inductive hypothesis. Now what about the factors in the product a and b? Uh, by inductive hypothesis we know that both are less than 1 and it, it is greater than 1. Uh, less than k plus 1 and greater than uh, 1. So, um, a and b. Now, by induction hypothesis, now by induction hypothesis, um, a and b which are uh, which are in between 2 to etc up to uh, k so by induction hypothesis a and b are uh, either primes or uh, can be expressed as product of primes are a and b uh, either are primes or can be expressed as product of primes okay can be expressed as product of primes then what um, so by inductive hypothesis a and b are which are numbers which are less than k uh, k plus 1 so uh, both are um, either a prime or it is a product of primes and hence the product AB is also um, a product of, is I also either primes or uh, it's a product of prime. Hence, uh, hence K plus 1 equal to A into B can be expressed as product of primes thus p of k plus 1 is also true hence by strong induction uh, the result is true for all positive integer The result is true for all, for every integer n greater than or equal to 2. So the first part of the theorem is over. Uh, now the second is 
so this is our first part uh, which one proving that either a number a, any number positive integer n greater than or equal to 2 is either a prime or a, uh, a product of primes now next we, uh, we need to prove the uniqueness so second is to prove the uniqueness of the factorization uniqueness of the factorization how to prove it is unique that we need to show okay <clears throat> Uh, so for proving the uniqueness first we assume that there are there are two prime factorization for um, any composite number n let n be a composite number with the two factorizations n equal to p1 into p2 into etc pr where pi sir primes is equal to q1 into q2 into etc qs we need to show that r equal to s and uh, every pi equal to every pi equals some qj for 1 less than or equal to i comma j less than or equal to r that is the primes q1 q2 etc uh, q uh, qs r uh, permutation of the primes p1 p2 etc pr okay so uh, before uh, moving to the uh, proof, first we assume that these numbers b1, b2, etc., pr, and uh, the uh, primes q1, q2, etc., qr uh, are in ascending or de uh, sorry decreasing in order. Sorry, in ascending order or increasing order. Let b1, p2, etc., pr, and q1, q2, q2, etc., qs are in increasing order that is p1 less than or equal to p2 less than or equal to p3 etc less than or equal to pr and q1 less than or equal to q2 less than or equal to etc less than or equal to qs okay so uh, First, for convenience, we assume that we need to show that R is equal to S. Number of prime factors are in the both expressions are same. For that, uh, for convenience, we assume R is less than or equal to S. And we rule out the case R is strictly less than S. Assume for convenience. Convenience. Assume for convenience that... R is less than or equal to S. Since uh, P1 into P2 into etc. P1 into P2 into etc. into PR is equal to Q1 into Q2 into etc. QS. We can say that P1 divides Q1 into Q2 into etc. up to QS. Then by lemma 3.4 P1, then by uh, lemma 3.4, what we can say is that P1 divides P1 divides QI uh, for some I. Okay, so P1 divides, sorry, not divides, P1 equal to QI. Since both are um, prime numbers, 
we can say that P1 equal to QI for some I. Now we can rewrite this equation. Let this be equation number 1. Equation number 1 becomes left side is P1 into P2 into etc. PR is equal to Q1 into Q2 into etc. into QI minus 1 QI into QI plus 1 into etc. QS. Of this QI and P1 are the same that we can cancel. So we will obtain P2 into P3 into etc. into PR is equal to Q1 into Q2 into etc. QI minus 1. QI plus 1 into etc. QS. Similarly, similarly for uh, since P2 divides similarly since P2 divides the product Q1, Q2, etc. QI minus 1, QI plus 1 into etc. QS. Mm. So again by this uh, corollary, not by lemma 3.4. Actually it was stated well in corollary. Then by the corollary, we have P2 is equal to QJ for some J. Q2 is equal to PJ for some J. Now cancel P2 on both sides. Hence we get P3 into P3 into P4 into etc. into PR is equal to uh, q1 q2 into etc qi minus 1 qi plus 1 into etc into qj minus 1 qj plus 1 into etc qs since the all the remaining factors also divides this product we can um, continue this and uh, the rhs uh, continue this process and the rhs becomes uh, left side sorry the left hand side of the equation becomes since p3 is again a factor p4 is factor etc up to pr we can make it as a factor we know it is a factor of the product or um, or this all divides this product q1 q2 etc qs then we can say that uh, the left hand side of the Uh, left hand side of this equation reduces to 1 but in the right hand side we have but in RHS we have what QR plus 1 into etc into um, Q is hence uh, we must have um, hence we must have R is equal to S hence R is equal to S this is impossible because uh, no, no. but uh, in RHS we have Q R plus one into etc Q S we will obtain. But uh, 1 cannot be written as a product of uh, this. We have R is equal to S is the um, result. Next, uh, hence the primes Q1, Q2, etc. Uh, hence the primes. Q1, Q2, etc. QS. Are the same as the primes are the same as the primes P1, P2, etc. PR in some order. In some order. 
Thus, the factorization of n is uh, unique. That is, except for the order in which the primes are written. So, this is the uh, fundamental theorem of uh, arithmetic. It's very important. Proof is also very important. Uh, so, study well. Uh, in this, um, this result contains uh, two uh, parts. That is, first part we have to prove any integer greater than or equal to 2 is a prime number, uh, prime or can be expressed as a product of primes. And uh, in the second part, we need to show that this such an expression is unique. That means we can express any integer n as a product of the primes in a unique way. So first part we prove by the strong induction. It's uh, quite easy. You can uh, understand from the steps. You just remember the steps of strong induction. This and uh, do it. Okay. And uh, in the uh, for the second part, for the second part, what we have to show that uh, show is that uh, uniqueness. For proving the uniqueness, first we assume that there are two such expressions. One is with the primes p1, p2, etc. pr and another one is with the primes q1 into q2 into etc. into qs. Uh, so we need to show that these two expressions, these two uh, um, expressions have the same number of primes. That is r must be equal to s and we have, we need to, one more thing we need to show is that P1, P2, etc., PR, and Q1, Q2, etc., QAs are same in uh, some order. Isn't it? That means P1 may be equal to some QK and P2 may be equal to some Q, P9, QR, like that. Okay. So, this must be, these two things we have to prove now. So, let P1 and uh, let us assume that these uh, prime factors P1, P2, etc., PR, Q1, Q2, etc., QAs are. Um, um, are in some increasing order that is p1 less than or equal to p2 less than or equal to like that and q1 is also q1 q2 etc also in the same way now uh, assume for convenience uh, we need to show that r equal to s so for convenience assume that r is less than or equal to s uh, so uh, p1 into p2 into etc into pr is equal to q1 into q2 into etc into qs so uh, q1 into q2 etc qs is written as a product of p1 and some other primes p2 up to pr uh, we can say that p1 divides uh, that q1 into q2 into etc qs so uh, by corollary not by the lemma it's by corollary um, by the last corollary we can write say that p1 is equal to qi for some i then uh, taking the equation 1 and cancelling p1 on both sides we will obtain p2 into p3 into etc pr is equal to q1 into q2 into etc qi minus 1 into uh, qi plus 1 into etc qs similarly since p2 divides this product again um, we can say that P2 equal to QJ for some J and cancel P2 on both sides. Then we again get the uh, reduced equation. And continuing this process, we have R is less than or equal to S. And all the PIs are factors or divides this product. And we will obtain it as what? Uh, oh, left side will be uh, reduces to what? But in the right side, uh, there is a product again, QR plus 1 into etc. into uh, QS. So, uh, what we need to show is that um, these uh, QIs uh, also must expose. That means uh, this may be um, So R must be that is R must be equal to S. Otherwise, that equation will not be uh, will not work, isn't it? So R must be equal to S. We can uh, rule out the case R is strictly less than S. Hence, uh, these are uh, um, P1, P2, etc., PS, uh, PR, and Q1, Q2, etc., QS are same in some um, different order. In some order. Okay. So this about the. Uh, proof of the theorem, fundamental theorem of arithmetic. The two parts are over. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you all. We'll stop here.